Welcome back to Capital Tonight. State Representative Trey Martinez Fisher is our guest, and it's good to have you back on the yeah, show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Lots has happened since we've uh, seen you last, and uh, interesting tweet I think that you had uh, a couple of few days ago that uh, you left your kumbaya hymnal <laughs> and brought your rule book, uh, right. and this is kind of leading up to that point of order that occurred, sure. kind of ending or at least stopping in its tracks the uh, that water bill uh, that would have dipped into the rainy day fund. Uh, talk about um, what you thought about that moment and and sure. why that point of work. Well, you know, I think that line really said it all because for 112 days we worked really well, worked together, we took our problems and worked through them outside, uh, and and just really tried to find common ground. And you know, but the the House Bill 11 and the Water Bill was really just sort of a, a, a you know a, a legislative attempt to do something that was out of the ordinary of the session. I mean, I think from Day 28, Democrats have said we are all in when it comes to water, but we cut 5.4 billion out of education on purpose. And we did it, you know, with with bad. We did it based on bad accounting from the comptroller, and we need to fix and restore those cuts. And so, from day 28, we have said water will be contingent on making sure we have a common solution for all of these things. And when leadership decided to move with water without even talking about public education. We had to let them know that we weren't going to sit by idly and let that happen. And, and so we made a statement saying it's not going to happen under our watch. We've been working together all along. We're going to continue to work together all along. But we're going to have a common solution to a problem that impacts the entire state of Texas. So from in, in terms of uh, legislation, then, how do you see this moving forward? Like, first of all, are you saying that to be able to address water, whether it's rainy day fund or not, Democrats are not going to go with that unless education is included in, a, sure. in the same bill? Looking at it another way, okay. this issue uh, is not about money. It's about votes. And you need 100 votes. And so the question is, can Republicans get 95 of their members and steal five Democrats to support the plan the way they want it? Or are we going to share in this? Are we going to pick up 50 Republicans and 50 Democrats, do it the old-fashioned way, everybody work together, everybody make a concession? And for Democrats, we believe that that menu of options should include public education. There are some Republicans that want to include transportation. Let's have an open discussion about it. But at the end of the day, everybody ought to be able to walk away saying we did our best work for the entire state of Texas. And we talk about when we mention the 100 votes, of course, because sure. that's constitutionally what you need to do if you're going to dip into the rainy day fund. That's right. So we hear then this week uh, through an interview with Peggy Fikak uh, with the San Antonio Express News with Speaker Strauss that um, this... Uh, Senate Joint Resolution Number One, Tommy Williams' mm -hmm, bill, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, both or does all three, right? Uh, although education, not as much as infrastructure sure. and um, uh, uh, water, but he's the speaker was saying, I don't think this is a no go. In other words, in the House, that he doesn't want to uh, see this kind of legislation going to voters. What, what your thoughts on that? Well, first I would say, you know, you take the Senate, for instance, where they are really bipartisan. They have to be bipartisan with a two-thirds rule. Even the Senate found, in its wisdom, to put $800 million of ready day fund for education. That being said, putting this into an SJR, uh, you know, maybe that's the Senate's approach, but, you know, quite frankly, we were all elected to make tough decisions and hard choices. Uh, and, and when we can get our arms around what is going to be the priority for the state of Texas, we ought to be able to make that vote. That's what people sent us up there to do. And I think what Speaker Strauss is saying, you know, in California and other places, they have these referendums where we have to get permission to do everything we do. I mean, the permission that we get is that reelection every two years for us in the House. And maybe if you're in the Senate, you run every four years, you sort of lose sight of going back to the voters. We're before the voters every two years. We talk to them all the time. Uh, this is something they want us to do. And, and quite frankly, you do this in an election that's in September, we're going to shrink this down to the most narrowest voting population that there is in the state. And quite frankly, that's when we put this into the hands of special interests, and I don't think that's appropriate. Is, is there any concern, though, because I think that's something that Senator Williams uh, tries to point out from his vantage point, that this is the only way that you can do this without busting the spending cap? Well, listen, I, I think, you know, respect with all due respect to Senator Williams, you cannot have it both ways. You cannot say, yes, I'm going to admit we are falling short on our, fi on our, on our funding priorities for our largest infrastructure challenges, but yet we'd like to fix it, but, but please don't tell anybody it's going to cost money. We all know it's going to cost money. We know that that's going to mean that our budget has, to, is, has the capacity to get bigger in the next two years. That's the reality of just growth and progress, that we shouldn't look at it as a negative. We should look at it as a positive. And you can't be both fiscally conservative and wanting to spend $2 billion for water. You cannot be a fiscal conservative and wanting to spend $6 billion in a rainy day fund. We have some real priorities that have never been addressed in the last decade or so, 
it's certainly going to be expensive, and we just have to do it the right way and do it the transparent way. Is there a red line in terms of how much money to move into this pot for education? I mean, is it all the cuts from last session? Well, I'll tell you, here's what I know. $5.4 billion was cut by Republicans uh, because the comptroller said we didn't have the money. Turned out she was wrong. And thus far, the House has only put $3 billion in to restore those cuts. So what, what, so what has happened is 160,000 children went to school two years ago that didn't get a dime for a textbook, didn't get a dime for a desk, didn't get a dime for a ride home on a bus. And we cannot acknowledge, we, we have to acknowledge that we skipped a generation, we skipped, excuse me, we have to acknowledge that we skipped some children in the classroom. And it's going to cost $2 billion. Now, I think we can be practical, I think we can be reasonable, but Republicans have yet to make an offer for us to entertain. We've told them where we are, we've yet to hear from them, and quite frankly, we better do this by May 9th because that's the last day to pass House bills. Okay. We're out of time. I knew there was a lot to talk about just on this issue. We'll have to have you back. I know that you just, real quick, you're, you're a House Bill or 21, right? Uh, this sure. is a database. Tell us the progress of that. This is actually a database uh, for offenders in certain instances of like uh, against children or family. Yeah, habitual, habitual offenders for domestic violence or child, child abuse. We want to know who you are. And quite frankly, it's, it's an information bill. We want to make sure that families are protecting themselves in their environment to make sure that they're not, they're dangerous people that live in their neighborhoods and they can take preventative action to avoid bad situations. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that legislation as it progresses. Representative, thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate you returning onto the show, and we're back with more right after this.